Hi guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Okay, have you personally had a near-death experience? Have you had some sort of phenomena that you just can't explain how it happened, like it was miraculous intervention? Maybe you've seen an angel, you've seen a ghost, you've received a message that came true. So if you've had a weird experience, or it may be a fluke where you could have died, but somehow you survived it, please email me below. I'd love to hear your story. If you think that your story is something that you want to share, that you feel others would benefit from and maybe learn about the paranormal or what is out there, do, 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 please email me. My link is below and let's talk. So here we go with today's guest. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Thank you so much for being here today. Today I'm here with the beautiful Beverly from Brisbane, Australia. And this is the story of what happened to her last year. So let's hear about Beverly. Thank you so much for being here today, Beverly. Oh, thanks Linda for having me. Yep, so let's start, Beverly. What happened? Okay, so it was well the 15th of October last year. I thought I had food poisoning. And me being me, just thought I would ride it out. Um, got to the 20th and needed to go to the hospital. We called out a doctor and he basically said my blood pressure was too low, my heart rate was high, and off I went to the hospital. So turned out it wasn't food poisoning. Um, I actually had sept gone into septic shock because I had an un diagnosed kidney stone that had blocked caused a major infection and yes had turned to sepsis so that was where I was at it took the hospital a while because I was insisting I just had food poisoning sitting there um, however when I did arrive at the hospital I code one at reception I couldn't fill out any paperwork so I got through <laughs> to the back of the hospital pretty damn quick when I arrived there, um, was in, ambulanced over to another hospital for emergency surgery. And that is not where my experience happened. My experience actually happened that next night um, and it, in the form of a dream. However, it was so interdimensional that it couldn't have been a dream. So I went in, into this dream where I was in this amazing place that was um, glittery and when I looked at my hand, my hand was sort of multidimensional. Like as I moved it, it wasn't physical, it wasn't solid. Everything sort of was very etheric and very, um, it's very hard to explain because it's sort of the colours are, the colours we just don't see. Um, so everything was very gold, but as it moved, it was sort of like moving in slow motion. And I was walking along this gold cobbled street that I didn't even seem to touch with my feet. Like as I was walking, it was almost as though I was floating. And I looked back and as you can tell, I'm a huge reader. I love my books. <laughs> and... Um, so it was a book. I turned around and there was this gold staircase there, even though I was in a street. And on this staircase was this magnificent, huge book, gold binding, and it had what looked like a boot on the front of it, almost like a converse boot, and this boot had wings. Um, and I just knew that I, I've read this book. I know what this book is. And I woke up from this dream. And I was laying in the hospital bed. However, everything was still multidimensional. When I was looking around the room, the glitter was all still there. It was as though I was there in this room, but I wasn't. And it was very strange. So I got out of my bed and I walked out into the corridor and the nurse asked me um, what was wrong. Was I looking for a drink? And I had no clue where I was. It was almost like for some reason I had this amnesia. What am I doing here? Who are you? And then it sort of came to me. I'm in hospital. This is this woman's asking me, do I need help? I'm like, no, 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 I'm fine. I don't need anything. And she said, well, do you want just go back to bed then? It's middle of the night. And I said, okay. 
And then I had to ask her where my room was because I just had no clue where I was. So she was putting her arm out and touching me on the shoulder. However, she was multidimensional. Her arm wasn't really there. So it was this magical experience. It just gives me complete goosebumps just thinking about it. And I made my way back into the room and then I'm like the book. The book came to mind. So I started going through my phone and I was flicking going, okay, it's got to be on my Kindle. I can't remember the name of this book. And I was flicking through my phone looking for this book, which I knew really wasn't going to be there. And then I was thinking about my bookcases at home and there's no gold book on there, but I knew I'd read this book. And then I went into back into the dream and I was walking down the street and the book was still there and I sort of doubled up going through this and I sort of vaguely can remember bits and pieces but it was the same kind of dream happening and it was all about this book and then I woke up a second time and I went to the toilet to the bathroom and looked in the mirror and at that split second I knew the book I was looking at was the Akashic Records And then the voices came and they were saying, you don't have to come back. You can go if you like. It's your choice now. You asked for this. You were unhappy with your life as it was. And you asked for the crossroads. You asked for this. And I looked in the mirror and I knew straight away then what they exactly what they meant. I was to come back and do spiritual work or I could leave the earth plane. And two weeks prior to this all of all happening, I had literally said, universe, come on, what's going on? If this is the rest of my life, just take me. And that, when I had that remembrance, I went, wow, they've put me at this crossroads and they've now given me the choice. And it was so clear that I knew when I got into my bed, it was my choice if I woke up the next morning and I looked in that mirror and I went, no, my kids need me, my grandkids need me and I have work to do. I'm coming back and I will do, I promise, whatever I need to do, whatever is necessary for me to come back tomorrow. You know, I want to wake up. So I literally woke up that next morning knowing that I was going to make the changes in my life that I needed to do without any fear. And that's how I've lived since then. Um, I gave up my job, my relationship, everything has pretty much (laughs) ended. So here I am at that crossroads starting completely again and following that spiritual path that I've been on for over 30 years now, So, which has always taken a back seat to life like being a single mum, it was I needed a job to support my kids. So everything was always a sideline and now no longer. It's it's who I am and, yeah, it's why I'm here. So it was a pretty amazing experience. Wow, that is an amazing experience. And I've got so many questions that I think (laughs) other people want to know too, Bev. So let's go through some of these because I've been making notes while you've been talking. Okay. When you were on the gold cobbled stairs um, under the street, can you explain that a little bit more for me? What did it look like? Did it have a gutter system where there were there like shop fronts or was it like the um, Wizard of Oz where it had fields of flowers on either side of it? What did it there was a lot of colour amongst the gold. It was majority gold. The the I knew there was buildings there. However, they didn't take, they weren't in really in what I was looking at, you know, like it was more that staircase stood out, it was gold. So I feel like the buildings were gold as well. However, when you look off in the distance, there was flowers and lots of colour, like, a, you know, it was very, um, it just everything was so glittery. It was almost like it, it was completely multidimensional. Like nothing was solid. Everything was just, it was there, but it wasn't. So would you call it more like energy rather than a material object? Yes, yes. I think that's how I knew that it wasn't, it, I wasn't in an earth plane dream. It was yeah. It was more of um, 
a vision rather than a dream, I suppose, or maybe I was taken there. I, it definitely felt very real, <laughs> very real. Yes. So, and when you saw the book on the staircase with wings, mm. how big was it? Was it like it was a, a normal-sized book? book or no, how it was a huge book. I mean, like I'm talking, it was a book and, and it how, was thick and, yes, it was huge. And so, how big were the wings on it? Can you explain no, what it was? Wasn't, there wasn't wings on the book. It was like there was a shoe, like a boot, almost looked like oh, okay, a, a boot. boot on yeah. the front so I could see it sitting on the stairs however I could see the front of it and the wings came off of the boot okay wow so when you woke up and you went out and you were talking with the nurse explain the difference that you saw with her in like the physical to what you now saw her in that energetic field how, how did you how did that make you feel um it was strange because I knew I was still within that dream. Whatever was going on in that dream, even though I had woken up, it was still happening. So it was it was as though I was still in that dimension, but I had woken up and I knew I'd woken up. However, I was sort of stuck in this plane of higher energy, higher yeah. dimension, and it, it was more a feeling rather than, and even when she spoke, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a voice like we're speaking now. It was almost like she spoke, her mouth moved, but I knew what she was saying. I felt her words. So it was, yeah, so I knew it was, even though I was in the hospital and I was talking to her, Yeah, I was having this experience. And what did she look like when you saw her? Just go in a little bit more about what did her clothes look like? Were they doing this shimmering as well? Well, she was solid as she was when I saw her before I went to sleep that night. However, everything had a glimmer to it. Everything yeah. was almost like when she was talking, her face glistened like it was not solid, not completely solid. Wow. So it was almost like she would had met me in that dimension However, I'd met her in the physical. It, it's really strange to experience and to explain yeah. afterwards because I went in and out of that dream state asleep two or three times. But each time I did, I was trying to work out where do I know this book from? What's this book from? And it yeah. wasn't until I walked and looked at myself in the mirror and I was still glimmering and I was still in that etheric and I even looked at my hospital band to go okay I am still Beverly because at that time I really didn't feel like I was a physical being yeah so okay let's go in now because I don't want to go too much about the Akashic records because there's so much debate about what those books are actually are and if they even exist so let's go mm -hmm. back to what you knew about your experience. You were talking about how you had that option. So it's like free will where you mm -hmm. could either stay where you were or come back to this living world. So mm -hmm. a question that I like posing to people is, do you feel that all these experiences where we have this glimmer of what could be, do you think that they're predestined in our life contracts where yes. we agree to it? Yeah, absolutely. You do? Yeah. yeah. So do you want to elaborate on that or just leave it? Well, I mean, I've been, I was one of those strange kids who had ghosty experiences as a child. So as a very young child, I was always searching for what's out there rather than what's here. And so I became very interested in crystals at quite a young age. And yeah. that was not the norm when I was that age, you know, like we were airy fairy back then. And we were, you know, my, my first mother-in-law used to call me witchy poo because I was always treating my kids with natural things rather than that. So at a very young age, I went down that spiritual path, searching for energy and learning about energy and all of that. So me personally, I do believe that we make a contract when we come here prior to coming 
and that we have certain lessons to learn and things to do and ways to evolve our soul. And we can go off that track, you know. Sometimes we lose faith, we lose trust in, you know, everything that's provided because we're actually very more, so much more powerful than we actually think in a physical body. Yes. And that yeah. experience just awakened me to that full dimensional experience that we are so much bigger than this earth plane. Absolutely. Mm. And, you know, I give you so much credit, Beverly, because, you know, it takes a hell of a lot of guts and trust to actually say, I want to make some changes in my life. Mm. You know, you mentioned that you gave up your job, you gave up your relationship. That yes. takes a heck of a lot of courage. So I'm very proud of you that you've taken those steps. So looking forward now with the experience that you've had, what changes have you made, if any, because you've always been on a spiritual path, but where are you heading now? What are you doing? And, you know, um, what services and everything else do you provide for people who want to come? Okay, um, so I've done Reiki and energy healing for many, many years, um, but it's always been friends, family, and a sideline to me. Now I'm actually making that uh, more of a full-time kind of, well, whatever, you know, whatever, however it's meant to be. I believe that we all have the power to heal ourselves. And I also believe that when you visit a healer, they're just opening you up to your full potential. So I'm just a conduit. If I heal somebody, uh, it's not me that heals. They heal themselves. And that's where I feel my job is now. I'm here to help others awaken to their true potential. And whatever I will do along that way. I mean, I use use sound healing now I have tuning forks I use sound healing um and and Reiki but I'm also writing a book about vibration because I do believe that to actually experience that higher dimension we all have the ability to do that in a physical body without having a near-death experience however um so many people are looking for outside of themselves and we have it all within and so here I am now, I'm going to write. I'm actually putting together some courses. Um, I'm putting together some guided meditations and things like that to help people to open up to actually, yeah, accept their own power, I suppose. Wow. So. Well, Beverly, it's been my absolute privilege and honour to have you as a guest on my show Thank today. You so much. Oh, yeah. Well, um, anyone listening, if you do want to contact Beverly, I'm going to put all her information down in the description below. She is located in Brisbane, Australia. However, like myself, you know, she may be able to do remote viewing and doing healings through Zoom, etc. as well. So if you do wish and you feel connected to Beverly, please reach out to her. And thank you all so much for watching today and I hope that you have a great day. Thank you so much, everyone, for Thanks, watching. Linda. Oh, thank you too, darling. Okay. Mm -hmm.